Okay, so good afternoon also from my side. I'm Wolfgang Gensch, and uh, recently I'm the co-founder and president of the Ubercloud, a community and marketplace for engineers and scientists to discover, try, and buy computing on demand in the cloud. So that was the short story. And uh, so I promised Shaheen to uh, talk a little bit uh, about my own experience, my own talk. Uh, therefore, I had to change the title into uh, from scientist to serial entrepreneur. So it's really, the first half is really about me. And uh, the second half then is uh, about what I've learned in the first part, the part and applying it now to the second part trying to avoid the big pitfalls and mistakes which we did in the past and uh, going hopefully more professionally, more experienced than into uh, this uh, last endeavor. Uh, so also, the, yeah, there is one red thread throughout my business life, which is high performance computing. I started with vector computing, parallel computing, distributed computing, grid computing, cloud computing. So uh, on different sides, which uh, uh, you know, after all is a huge benefit. So HPC Matters, I started with scientific insight in uh, research organizations, moved over into teaching, and finally got into industry and uh, into entrepreneurship. Okay, so like, I love that one. If you want to build the best bike in the world, just first do it in the computer. So that's uh, easy to understand. And uh, so that's basically what I'm doing you know, all my last 30 plus years. So my business life on one slide, which uh, should show you a little bit uh, the different approaches I did basically to the same topic, to the same area. So in one slide, that's really difficult. So these are 30 years or so. <laughs> yeah, so that's, yeah. that, that's uh, the left one is the professor, and the right one is the guy who is having fun. Uh, so there are several stages, right? I mean, Bruno knows well what I'm talking about, right? Yes. So, OK, I mean, good. So uh, scientist. So the, the, the first one is more the researchy guy, right? Uh, solving, trying hard to solve big problems with HPC. No way without HPC. Uh, so the one who is doing his hands dirty, then the one who is teaching how to do uh, or to make your hands dirty, and then getting even broader in organizing and helping and advising something like 200 conferences over the last 30 years. Okay, so the second phase is then more approaching the industry with what you've learned in R&D. And also in R&D, you can take over uh, um, management activities, tasks, etc., which you then apply to industry. So it is basically a seamless growth, an internal personal growth, which, which you do, which is very natural. So there is no disruption even between research and industry. It, it is not that you do one thing and the next day you do the other thing. It is really very overlapping. And finally, that's uh, the entrepreneur, uh, starting in 1990 with uh, Genia Software. Uh, and then whenever we uh, got some additional contracts, some additional tasks, etc. so my VC said, you have to focus, 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 Carl. Yeah. And so we spun, spun off. Uh, all these other things which uh, matured inside Ingenia's first, and then after two, three years, we spun them off. We took five employees and put them over there, and uh, uh, indeed, uh, Carl, in a different building, right? So in, it's just oh, mostly around the corner, still in reach, going to lunch together, but uh, then working in a small team and building up these, uh, these spin-offs. Uh, except parallel computing, which we did together uh, with Parsitech, uh, that one fell asleep, so it didn't really crash. But you know, it was a transputer time, 
uh, it didn't fly, basically. And uh, so after two years, we, we shut it down again. Uh, but all the other guys are still alive. So they are doing fine. And uh, the leaders in these different uh, companies, they became ownership after some uh, few years. And uh, so to motivate them uh, again and again. And OK. So, <clears throat> and it's about, you know, the scientist and dot, 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 the entrepreneur. So that's why my driving tweets, which uh, Shaheen asked me, so what, what do you think was good and bad? Uh, and was, what was even good, uh, what was even bad with the good ones? So because very often you see the good ones uh, growing and exaggerating uh, within yourself. And you see what I, what I want to say. Obviously, people who know me, <clears throat> they say I'm very passionate. And I claim to be open-minded to listen to people and uh, uh, to be very curious. Uh, and that, that's what you see from my bio, definitely. Uh, the danger is, yeah, Wolfgang is dancing on so many weddings. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if you know that expression, but uh, we have that in German. Uh, so meaning, oh, well, you're everywhere. You lose focus, basically, uh, very uh, easily when, when you're open-minded, curious, you listen to that, and you think there is an opportunity, and there is another one. Uh, this is very dangerous. OK, uh, I'm persistent. Uh, Scott McNeely once uh, introduced me to someone, and says, this is our relentless grid guy. Uh, so, and I, I, I didn't know that. I looked into you know, the dictionary, relentless, hopefully nothing negative. Uh, it's almost negative. Yeah. Uh, so th that's what I found out, uh, meaning uh, uh, so you forget to stop in time some, sometimes. So some of my failures, like I wanted to set up uh, a company in the uh, Middle East with uh, some Arab friends from uh, you know, the Gulf countries. Uh, but uh, uh, so when I saw that they didn't really uh, come to a decision to an end. I mean, you know, we had endless dinners, and so it was, was absolutely great. Culture was wonderful, uh, but we never got to an end. And uh, I wasted about a year to try it, to still try it, and try it, and try it. So, so that's what I meant when I say, uh, so uh, yeah, don't don't go too far. And there, there have to be, there are signs uh, that uh, show that you're probably going into the wrong direction. And you have to be very open and uh, listen to people, listen to advice. Uh, good friends of mine said, Wolfgang, what are you? So now the 15th time you are, you are down in, in Bahrain and in, the, uh, in, uh, um, in Doha. Uh, so why are you doing this? I said, oh, I'm having fun. So OK, so liking people, easily excitable, loyal and faithful uh, are, in my humble opinion, uh, very necessary. Uh, um, traits which you want to have, but again, uh, if you exaggerate on that one, then it can be very dangerous, meaning, uh, again, you lose focus. And that's one of my, I mean, even my wife tells me that, uh, what, why are you doing this and this and this and that together? So, um, and, uh, you know, I try to listen to my wife, obviously. Sure. I mean, after so many years, yeah. Uh, okay, so then, then these, uh, these, these German disciplines that some, some people say so hardworking and very disciplined. Um, so you tend to forget, uh, you know, uh, hours like yesterday night, which uh, uh, I learned uh, quite late in my life. So I was really working 16 hours a day or so, uh, just because of all the other things, you know, very excited about. Uh, new things especially, and uh, bringing something successfully to an end. Uh, one thing, and uh, so again, I, I, um, uh, it's, it's due to, to Shaheen, he said, be very open with yourself. Yeah, so it's, uh, have, don't have a problem with, and uh, yeah, I'm often gripped by self-doubt. Is that still the right thing you do? And uh, then I tend to ask other people. Et so having high expectations, especially towards myself. And when something fails or you don't get through, uh, then you often get disappointed, but never tear down, obviously. So this is uh, because you have these rosé uh, glasses on. And uh, OK. So and finally, willing to take a risk. 
uh, almost adventurous. So uh, when uh, Sun Microsystems acquired my company Gridware, I simply gave my professor back to the ministry and said, okay, now I move on to Silicon Valley because I thought this is now the rest of my life, uh, which really was not because uh, two, weeks, uh, two months later, uh, Sun stock crashed, started to falling endlessly. So, okay, I had to learn to go back to work. And uh, because I already, in my mind, I was a millionaire and thought, okay, now that's it. Now just let's have fun, <laughs> which I still have, but in a very other, by a very other way. So, uh, uh, yeah, my very beloved company, Genius Software. G Genius stands for Gesellschaft for Numerically Intensive Applications and Supercomputing. In the very beginning, that was a service company. Uh, it was the early days of parallel computing. And we offered the industry to parallelize their in-house and their ISV, ISV codes. So we, for example, we, we uh, parallelized the whole fire code, which is about combustion. And uh, that was one of our first activities. And when we did that, <clears throat> we went to Atlas, and they gave us one million. And they said, OK, that sounds good. So that fire has a lot of customers in the automotive industry. Uh, and uh, so. They, they put one million German marks on the, on the which for, for that time, and especially in Germany, Germany is not used to deal with venture money so 20 years ago or so, right? It's still even not, not easy and not, not at all comparable with like Silicon Valley or, or other Boston area, Research Triangle Park, Park et cetera. So uh, over time then, we needed more money because we fell into, unfortunately, two recessions so 1992 was a two-year recession. I mean, this was a real headache. We almost went bankrupt. And uh, so I was running to the uh, German government and to the EU in Brussels to get projects. And we got over four, year, four to five years, we got 15 projects where we were part of it uh, for further developing grid engine into a distributed resource management system, workload manager, and uh, intelligent uh, uh, resource director, as we called it by then. We got a very big contract from Raytheon in the US. Uh, we were very amazed, because Raytheon usually is known to be a very closed environment, but they look for something uh, advanced and reasonable. Uh, reasonable meaning also uh, to pay for. And so they selected uh, us through an American uh, uh, company, which brought us on board then. Uh, okay. So uh, finally, yeah, because of, of these severe recessions and also some basic mistakes we did, um, I was forced by the VCs to restructure our company, which was a very good dis decision. Restructuring from someone coming from outside, so not, not from ourselves, myself especially. Uh, and we, we got profitable the first time, not by external funding and projects, but by selling software, like Grid Engine especially. Right? So that, that was a great uh, new experience for us. Hey, we make money. And uh, over the time, as I said, we uh, uh, one of uh, these uh, companies, and finally the merger with Court Systems in San Jose led to the final acquisition of, some, uh, of, of our company by Sun Microsystems uh, in uh, July 20, uh, uh, 2000, sorry. And uh, Grid Engine itself has a long, way of uh, uh, ups and downs, and they are now at a, uh, how do you say, one-time high, or at a, at a, uh, um, today, uh, landing, so two, two, two years ago, uh, landing in, uh, uh, softly in Univa. They are very, soft, very successful with it. So it's still alive. This is very nice to see. Uh, even after uh, almost 25 years, it's amazing. Yeah? Okay, so my major challenges uh, throughout Genius, because I've never done something like that before. Right? Uh, as a scientist, researcher, uh, in a sudden, you know, this business came over me. I did some consulting for IBM, DEC, Cray at those days uh, about code parallelization, et cetera. Uh, did trainings for them and for their customers and so on. And then I thought, okay, let's uh, do a company around this. So that was, that was the idea. And, uh, uh, so after that, uh, you know, as, as you know, I mean, in, in you know, the, the more mature 
an economy becomes, the more bureaucratism they, they build up. It's the same with big companies. Uh, so it is very difficult to move on more advanced uh, uh, within either such an economy like you know, the German one, for example. Uh, there are too many rules, too many compliances you have to follow. And, uh, so that the next one, when, when, when you have basically started it, then you start hiring empl employees. Uh, in the very beginning, I got a lot of help from, from consultants, but uh, very often this was not highest priority then, uh, working for us, they had several projects and so on. So you, you, you can't really control your, these, these consultants uh, as, as you like. So uh, I started about, after one year, hiring the first uh, full-time employees. Uh, and uh, I was very lucky because uh, it is a real difficult thing to get the best people for your special task, uh, your special area, especially in HPC, as you, as you know. And as a professor at the university, teaching numerical methods, partial differential equations, and supercomputing, uh, so at those are architectures, uh, for the higher semesters, uh, these guys were writing their diploma thesis then together, so I was kind of supervising them. And uh, we always had the choice, you know, between uh, a few very good ones to pick and then to hire into the... Uh, okay, so uh, uh, learning to give up control is uh, uh, difficult. Uh, outsourcing, non-business work, admin accounting, you tend to do these things yourself in the beginning because you uh, are hesitant to spend money. Uh, and uh, so this is a real uh, challenge uh, uh, to, yeah, to, to balance that. Uh, and you never have enough time for your employees. Uh, at least when, when you dance on so many different uh, uh, fields or weddings, then uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's not, not helping. Uh, high expectations, uh, okay, but this, the, I don't have a uh, remedy uh, for that one. So from, from the, this is a nice analogy, so to speak. So in the very beginning, you think, okay, so I climbed a few hills. You might know that one, where you have a nice chalking trail around uh, the dish in Stanford. And uh, then you thought, okay, so where is the next goal? And you look at the map, uh, and uh, okay, you see, well, okay, Mount Everest sounds very good. Let's tackle that one. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, no details, just the idea is over there. And uh, uh, so the next step is uh, you start thinking. And uh, while you think it's getting bigger and bigger, and you get somewhat ner uh, nervous, and then uh, you implement it, yeah? you, you fly there, you do the implementation, and uh, you, you get closer, you touch it. Yeah? You, with all your equipment, you stand in front of this sign, which says, uh, this is the direction. Okay, you get even more nervous, but you learned to not give up, but to do a roadmap and milestones and uh, start walking. And while you start working and walking and uh, you know, uh, uh, going over dangerous grounds, etc., finally, when you are lucky, very slowly, then you will make it. So that's kind of the analogy which I... Uh, okay, so this was our Mount Everest at those days. And uh, okay, there were th thousands of installations after four years in sun. And uh, so, Sun was very good. So, I, I, I was very lucky. Uh, so, what Carl said, this, we, we still were a small company, basically almost a start company within a very big company. And the Sun culture enabled us to basically work quite autonomously. So, uh, it was not difficult to keep our culture because our culture was very similar to Sun's culture anyway. Uh, very open-minded, risk-taking, uh, playing around with different technologies, etc. But uh, so, uh, Sun left us a lot of freedom over there. So, uh, the last five minutes or so, if I may, uh, so Steve, you give me uh, a wave, a hand, uh, is uh, about UberCloud. Two and a half years ago, and, and these things happen. If you are not open-minded, I mean, you put it away and you say, okay, uh, what a curious guy. Uh, so I got an email from someone called Borak Yenir. And basically, he, you'll see, it's via LinkedIn. Uh, I didn't know this gentleman. 
And he said, hey, I can't sleep. Uh, so basically like, hey, why are you guys in HPC so slowly adopting cloud computing while we in enterprise cloud, we already are flying, right? So he was VP, vice president of cloud computing for Pfizer, 24,000 people financial services company. Very experienced for seven years already. He has built all whole cloud environments, infrastructures, etc. So yeah, and he thought uh, something similar should happen in HPC. Right? So what if we put all the HPC supercomputer centers together and offer the empty the the the, the uh, cycles uh, to the industry? Obviously, something like that would not really fly. But that was the start of a discussion about uh, why not. So about the roadblocks uh, for especially HPC in the cloud. So what keeps engineers and scientists still hesitant and uh, not adopting uh, cloud computing as uh, the enterprise is doing? So OK. And uh, I flew over. You know, we had uh, two or three Skype calls. Uh, and uh, three weeks later, I was sitting in the plane to San Francisco. We closed the doors of his office for one week from early morning to late night. There was a knocking when there was food, uh, so kind of under the door. And uh, so that was basically like the office wall. Then I flew home, back home, and uh, we worked uh, via Skype, uh, you know, through all these uh, little notes. And we, we came up with something like that. So, uh, uh, and, and we, we, we thought, oh, that looks quite complex. But I think this is a very natural step-by-step -step approach of uh, such a problem. So. The very first one is, you have a rough idea. Uh, this was then in June that we decided to start with, as you see, with an experiment. Uh, we wanted to know the real roadblocks, not the ones which everybody talks about it, but which ones are real. And so we, we said we can only do this together with the community. So Tom Tarber encouraged us to do a call for participation in HPC Wire. And in a sudden, we had 160 companies participating in such an experiment. We were able to do 25 experiments in a sudden and to publish Uber, uh, Uber uh, in our overall and uh, uh, to uh, uh, talk about this and uh, to, spread it to, to spread the word. After round one, after 25 of these experiments, we said, OK, we know everything. That's it. But then the community protested and said, I want to do one, I want to do one, and what about me, etc." So we couldn't stop. And we decided to never stop. We will do continuously experiments. Whoever wants to do an experiment in five years even or so, easy. Because we learn a lot with these experiments. You can really experiment with uh, a lot of different scenarios. So the next one is we said, so uh, with these experiments, we build a community around it. So far, we have over 3,000 companies in 72 countries participating in active or passive roles in this community. Uh, and uh, it's far not enough to build a business on top, okay? So the business on top is something like beginning with 100,000. Uh, so that, that, that is a simple math, basically. And uh, so to uh, satisfy the community, we said we have to bring providers and, uh, uh, um, and consumers together, so engineers and scientists here. And we offered to the providers, we offered an exhibition space. So they are online exhibitors now. So we have 36 of the providers who pay for being uh, online on this exhibition. And the users then can check the different services and offerings uh, in this exhibition. And uh, so the next step then is uh, we started really actively doing marketing. Uh, and while we did that, we already decided about the technology which you might have heard, we are using Docker containers, which we now almost for two years further developed into HPC con containers with something like 12, 13 uh, bells and whistles, which are all enablers for HPC, uh, like uh, monitoring, so what is, what am, what's my job doing in the cloud, for example, so that you get control back. You know, losing control is a very big uh, roadblock uh, in the cloud. You never know what over there what happens, and uh, this is not very good for building trust. And, uh, and, and all these things. And so there's compression, there is encryption, there is uh, VPN on the fly, and uh, a few other things. OK, so uh, that's basically uh, you know, the two and a half years uh, 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 roadmap. We are still self-funded. Uh, so 
a very important thing is uh, what Carl said. You want to continuously work, not even talk or listen, really work with your community. Because while you work with your community, you really know how they do it, what they do, and where they are reluctant, and so on. So uh, these signs today tell us that uh, it's too early for something like that. Uh, also, uh, so we have regular webinars. And uh, we have two to three slides within these 20 slide webinars, which are Q&As. Right? So we ask the 100 plus people over there a few questions. And you know, within 30 seconds, you get the answers. So that's, uh, uh, someone asked this, uh, how do you get this uh, market analytics uh, or analysis information? So that's how we get them for free, right? Uh, so, uh, and, and really on time. So we know we, we can ask two, three questions during such a webinar. We, every month about we do a webinar and so we get this uh, information. And uh, so these uh, experiments, uh, this is really to explore the end-to-end -end process. This is 22 steps. Yeah, fine, thank you very much. 22 steps which we cut any process from the end user's desktop into the cloud, you know, knocking at the cloud door, so to speak, uh, getting familiar with uh, each individual's cloud provider access, authorization, authentication, et cetera, identification processes, running the whole thing in the cloud and then getting the results back. Uh, and uh, so we accompany every team, uh, so far 162 teams, through this end-to-end -end process. And uh, about half of them failed, and the other half succeeded. Uh, there are uh, uh, many of the providers, uh, yeah, so the, the final thing is, and learning how to resolve the roadblock. That's, that's the most important thing, right? Uh, last year, for this effort, we got uh, the HPC Wire Award, uh, the Reader's Choice Award for uh, the best cloud implementation. Uh, you see there is still some empty white space over there. Uh, let's see what happens with that one. Uh, usually people are under non-disclosure until end of uh, uh, Monday. Uh, so uh, today is Monday, oh, okay. But it's not, not yet end of the day. So we have wonderful partners. And uh, uh, so also I said we are still self-funded. Uh, we, we quit our jobs and we had wonderful, very, very nicely paid jobs. Uh, we quit, both Borak and I, we quit our jobs last year, June. So uh, basically we are jobless, but uh, still living uh, from, as we also say, from our hand into our mouth. Uh, great sponsors like Intel, uh, HP, Bull, uh, especially we did uh, over 10 experiments just with Bull uh, and uh, the Extreme Factory. Uh, uh, Mark Levrier is over there. Yeah, oh, great pleasure. And Ansys, I mean, uh, you know, we, we are thinking if these guys take money in their hand, uh, we, are doing, we are doing something right. right. So these are basically what you see there, these are our early customers, mostly on the provider side, because you have, first you have to build a provider community to offer something to the end users. The other way around, it would not work. Uh, and uh, we have uh, about 10 of the media partners over there who nicely write stories about it. And uh, we get some money from our sponsors, pump it into the media, and uh, so that's, and, and certainly into technology. So we work with uh, consultants again, uh, contractors. So the story is, uh, very quickly, every engineer and scientist today has three options to do computing. Uh, option number one is sitting on the desk. You'll see there, it's their workstation. There are 20 million engineers and scientists out there who use workstations for simulations. So that's basically our target market for now. This market will grow to 15, 50 million in about uh, uh, 10 years, according you know, to the makers community, which is coming up. You know, those 3D printing, simulation here, printing there. Uh, so it will grow dramatically. Uh, so the next option then is yeah, in-house server, but a $70,000 server costs over three years. Total cost of ownership is one million. So small, medium enterprises have real difficulties to buy their own server, which costs one million over three years, right? So that is the big chance then for HPC in the cloud, because now you tap into that and it's 
on-demand, pay-per-use. It is not OPEX, uh, sorry, it's not CAPEX anymore, capital, but it's operational expenditure, much more flexible budget, uh, and uh, different, yeah, uh, approvals. So HPC, we know that uh, over 90% are really just doing desktop. And then maximum 5% uh, are here and there using a server, and uh, less than 0.1%, so that, that should be different. This is optimistic. Uh, is uh, HPC Cloud today. So what we, what we hear, when we hear these success stories, this is all something like uh, one promille. Uh, the benefits are clear, uh, and, and that's what I, what, what I said before in my comment. It is additional, you know, in a sudden you, you own, basically for a certain amount of time, you own an HPC system, as big as you want, yeah? as much as, you, as, as your budget allows. So you have an HPC system now, yeah? and then, uh, so you don't need HP, HPC expertise for that. As an engineer, you click and then you get it. You pay per use, uh, you scale your resources up and down very dynamically according to your business needs. And it's low risk. If you don't like provider A, then you move over to provider B. Why can you do that? Because of the containerization of the application. So you move the container with the application over from your desktop to your server to the cloud, 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 cloud. So this is a new era now, uh, removing a lot of these roadblocks. And we know of, of these roadblocks now. So I'm running through that. As you see, there is, uh, for, for the end users, it's a new business and working paradigm. And uh, today, you need cloud expertise to get onto the cloud. Someone, I mean, in, in good cloud providers, you get a lot of support, obviously, right? Uh, some others, you know, like uh, AWS, you basically do it yourself according to very nice instructions, certainly. Security, privacy, trust, this is more mental, uh, the security thing. Intellectual property is a hard one, uh, and if you really have to take care of that, keep it in-house, so don't, uh, don't touch it for now. Wait another five years until everybody throws it. And until you also found out that uh, uh, NSA and others, they are already within your own computer. And uh, they might not be easily getting into the cloud because the, the cloud provider just hired a $300,000 security expert, which you cannot afford, right? Okay, so uh, software licensing is really, someone said it here on the nice panel, uh, is moving. So we have very, in, in, in a sudden, it, it, within the last uh, one and a half years or so, changed a lot, heavy data transfer. But, I mean, this is not really cloudish. This is because you have your, a last mile problem, right? Uh, so, I mean, there are InfiniBand connections uh, between Australia now and Singapore. So, certainly we cannot afford it, but... Uh, uh, okay, finally, the HPC cloud, mar cloud markets. There are already hundreds of cloud providers. How the hell can an engineer discover her best suited solution in this chaotic uh, market space? So, therefore, a marketplace which uh, provides structure and uh, uh, very nicely sorted out services. So that's today. You know, it's a, should tell you that's, and that is that that that's what is just been announced. So the marketplace uh, we open it up in the new form uh, last week, and uh, this is a glance, a snapshot into it. So you see, so this is a slide which I showed at HPCast uh, two days ago. Therefore, you zoom into, like on the uh, up, uh, lower right bottom, HP, HP Halion. And uh, when you go into the HPC Halion store of this shopping mall, then you see ANSYS, you see DCV, remote visualization, you see support offerings, and you see uh, you can even ask for a custom quote. When, you don't, uh, when, when your needs don't fit. So the back end, and I'm, I'm really done now, uh, the, the back end of the whole thing are uh, Docker containers. And uh, so you see, you build your stack, whatever it is, the data, the application, the tools, MPI, for example. Then you launch it, and then it runs on your workstation, as well as on your server, as well as on the cloud. So having said that, this is all the uh, challenges we tackle. Uh, at least half of them are completely res resolved now, uh, and a few others, uh, so, but the others are all softened, uh, and uh, 
so we are very convinced that this will change uh, the, the market dynamics. And this is, uh, yeah, sorry, I just scratched the surface, as you can imagine. And uh, now the last one is try the Uber Cloud Marketplace. And if you don't like the price, we go back to the providers over the next six months and negotiate one price which you like. So that's, that will be a promotion which we start 1st of January. OK? So thank you very much for your patience. This is Borak, the guy on the left side. Uh, Borak in here. In the meantime, uh, a, very, a very good and very dear friend. And uh, what a nice coincidence that we are both on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. <laughs>